Welcome to your next lesson on your wedding gift registry. Did you know that two and three millennials still create a traditional gift registry? In this lesson, we will go over what a gift registry is, when to start it, what items to include on it, how to spread the word about your registry, where to register, universal registries that are available, gift registries for the home, the kitchen, and registries for everything else. We have lots of exciting things to go over in this lesson, so let's dive in. What, first off, what is a gift registry? A gift registry is a service provided by a retail store or website that assists engaged couples in the communication of gift preferences to their wedding guests. It's also a list of items you and your soon-to-be spouse need and can use to start your lives together. So, now that we know what it is, when should you start it? Ideally, you should do this as soon as you get engaged, but before you send out your invitations. I know there are so many different stores and items to choose from, and the registry process can be a bit overwhelming, but the earlier you start, the better. You'll want to do a little research to see what retailers are best for you. And remember, taking the guesswork out of your gift buying will help your friends and family fill up your new lives with whatever you may need to get started on your journey together. If you start early, you can use one registry for any celebrations you may be having where guests will most likely bring a gift like your engagement party, bridal shower, and the wedding itself. Choosing your registry items. Your gift registry can have any items on it that you and your partner desire. They can range from household items. If the two of you are buying a home or moving in together once you get married, you'll most likely need a few items to get you started. This is the perfect opportunity to ask for those items. Maybe the two of you have lived together long before the engagement and have most of the household items you already need. Well, then you could definitely ask for some items to be able to entertain with for the outdoors now that you're married and will be entertaining a bit more. Travel. If you have all the household and outdoor items covered, you could always ask for travel certificates on your registry so that maybe each year on your anniversary, you take a nice trip together and reconnect a bit because we all know how hectic life can be and being married and working and building together, it's a nice opportunity to take a little break, enjoy some alone time together, and hey, even maybe get started on that family. Honeymoon. If the two of you are paying for most of the wedding itself, you may not have had enough money left over for that fabulous honeymoon in Bora Bora you've always dreamed of doing. And if this is the case, you can always have a honeymoon registry and ask for the gift of funds to go toward your honeymoon. Your family and friends would love to see the two of you have a nice romantic getaway after all the hard work and planning you put into the wedding. Donations. For those of you who don't really need anything per se, you can always ask for donation for something you may really need to upgrade or are looking to purchase now that you two are joining your lives together. And first things first, you should take inventory of what you have, what you really need, and what you may really want to replace or upgrade. You don't have to register for everything, but it should definitely contain what you'd like and use the most. Decide what patterns, materials, and colors you'd like, and begin there. So here is a list of common items that bride and grooms register for.
Once you've sat down and figured out what items you'd like to place on your registry, it's time to start looking for retailers to set your gift registry up with. And here, I wanted to put together a popular list of retailers that most couples tend to use. And you'll see there are universal retailers where you can literally register for anything. There are local retailers where you can register for most of your household items on. And then there are some retailers that specialize in unique registries. And while we're on the subject, I'd like to offer a little advice here to make sure you go about the process in the correct way. I definitely suggest creating your registry with two to three different retailers, but no more than that. While you wanna make online shopping easy for your guests, you don't wanna overwhelm them with a barrage of different stores for them to have to look through and require much of their time to do so. You'll wanna register with retailers that are easy to shop and remember, you can include local retail stores, but if you have many out-of-town guests, they may not be able to purchase gifts from there, so you'll want an additional option for them. Also, you'll wanna choose items that range in price. Some family members are happy to get the two of you started off and purchase a big ticket item for you, but some friends may have to travel across the globe just to be there with you and will be spending a small fortune to boot. You'll want not only big ticket items, but items that range anywhere from $25 and up to 200 or more. While you may only need one set of Rachel Ray pots and pans, when it comes to dinnerware, remember, you'll need to register for pieces. And a good rule of thumb is to ask for eight to 12 pieces each because you'll most likely be entertaining more and even perhaps expanding your family. So you'll need quite a few of those pieces. And at least one of your registries should be available online. Your guests should also be able to place their orders by phone or in person. Because remember, not everyone, especially the older generations, shop online. And the last thing I wanted to mention was to make sure you update your registries often. You want to make sure that your guests always have a selection to choose from. So this is going to be important as your wedding date gets closer. You should aim to have twice as many items on your list as you do guests. And there should be a low, mid, and higher price point for all of those items. Oh, and I can't forget to tell you that you should also keep track of every single gift you receive from all of your celebrations. You'll need this information to send out your handwritten thank you cards thanking your guests for their kind and lovely gift, mentioning it by name. For gifts received before the wedding, these handwritten thank you cards should be sent out no more than two weeks after the event. And for those gifts received at the wedding, your handwritten thank you cards should go out no later than one month after the wedding. Spreading the word about your gift registry. Once you've figured out the items you'd like to add to your registries and you've gone ahead and set them up, now it's time to talk about how to let your guests know where you're registered at, and there's definitely some etiquette that goes along with this that you must remember. Let's go over the proper way to go about asking for guests gifts and providing them with your registry information. First, let's discuss the proper ways to spread the word. The first one being your wedding website. Here, you can put a link directly for your retailers for your guests to conveniently shop at. The second is word of mouth. You should not only let your bridal party, but both sets of parents know about your registry information as more than likely they'll receive questions from your friends and family members about where you're registered. On the flip side, there are three places you absolutely should not share your gift registry. And when I say absolutely, I mean this is non-negotiable. And the first place is your wedding invitation. I mean, you would think this is common sense, but maybe not for those who have never done a registry before, so that's why we're going over it here. Let your wedding invitation be just that, a wedding invitation, not a request for gifts. Not only is it tacky, but can also be considered rude to put this information on your invitation. And second is your save the date. Again, 
You're asking people to reserve that date to join you to be witness your nuptials and not to come and bring you lavish gifts. That's not how this works. And the last is social media. Just don't do it. One of the main reasons why is because registries have a lot of your personal information on them and you don't want that information out on the World Wide Web. The second is if you share a link publicly with your friends, get ready to have to invite all 297 of them because why would they buy you a gift if they weren't being invited? Get it? Now, there's a few times it's acceptable for you to give out your information that we did not go over, and that is when your retailer gives your registry announcement cards. Feel free to give a few of them to your wedding party members to keep them on them in case anyone asks for the information. And it's also perfectly acceptable to list your registry information on any shower invitations because that's what showers are designed for, gift giving to the couple to get them started off. So by now, I hope you're a little more comfortable with the process of gift registries, especially if you've never done one before and you're equipped with all the do's and don'ts. So what's trending in gift registries? I wanted to share a few things that are trending right now in the wedding registry world in case, you know, you like keeping up and having the most trendy items available. And the first one is asking for cash, shower Bluetooth speakers, indoor outdoor string lights, Pyrex storage containers, Keflon nonstick 10 piece bakeware sets, Dutch ovens, cast iron skillets, Airbnb gift cards, KitchenAid stand mixers, instant pots, and bamboo cutting boards. Wedding registry tips. Be sure to ask for whatever you may want or need as a couple starting your new lives together. Remember, the gift registry information and or link should only go on your wedding website, not your invitations. You can have your parents and or the bridal party let your guests know about your registry if your guests ask about one. And make sure you register at more than one place and type of retailer so that it's convenient for your guests to purchase a gift for you. So there you have it. All you'll need to know about your wedding gift registry. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you in the next one.